Well, hello, traders and investors. I'm Ellie Little, and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. We take a look at these markets, doing it from a neoclassical perspective. That means each time we're asking ourselves on the charts, what's significant? Are there tests into it? What do they tell us? We're looking for clues. We let the market tell us, and we use that information to make decisions. That's neoclassical. That's what we do. That's how we're able to make the kind of calls we make and make the money that we make as a result of making those calls. If you're not making money in this market, I don't know what's uh, you know what what to do to help you, right? I mean, the market's giving you lots of opportunities. I know it's been in the sideways trend, but but there's trades around. I mean, I talked about a trade last week in the gold up 10% in three days on the GDX, 4% on just the GLD if you want to go the safer route. How about just trading gold against the dollar? I mean, that trade's been there for months now. You know, you sell one, you buy the other, or you sell part of one, buy part of the other. It's, it, you know, folks, there's opportunities. You just need to look at what's out there. As far as what these markets did, let's take a look at them uh, up on the day. Pushing back towards the highs here, we had the, the NASDAQ leading the way. It was the strongest one all day long. Russell was uh, barely green at the end. S&P gains another third. We're almost at the top of that range again. We're setting up. We got the ECB this week. Uh, you know, we're setting up for another attempt to run this thing higher. You got a uh, services number today that was a little bit disappointing. That put the dollar down. That put gold up big. Gold was up, uh, you know, one and a half percent, almost uh, two percent in inside the day. Silver up three and a third. All spikes up a percent and a half. You know, if, if the money's going to be easy, which is what it looks like again, then those things go up, and then what happens? The dollar gets hit. Over in Europe, of course, the euro goes up. That puts pressure on those equities, and so you have this seesaw action that just continues on and on and on. Let's look at the markets. Let's look at the S&P. We'll start there. We had volume pick up a little bit today. What are we? We're at the top of the range. We're coming into the bottoms of the swing point highs. In particular, we're coming into this bar. So let's draw them out here real quick. This is what I'm talking about when I talk at the top of the show about test, right? Where's your test? Well, if I look at the test on this chart, it's fairly obvious. It's right here. It's this bar. That's where the volume is, right? And, uh, oops, drew it in the wrong place. This bar right there, right? That's where the wide price spread is and that's where the volume is. That's where you want to look. If you if you look closely, right, you got this little red line up here telling you that's where resistance is. It's on this bar as well as the swing point or the lows of the highs. That's where your resistance is. That's what you're coming into. What are you coming into it with? Well, you're coming into it with more volume, 34 and a half, 33. What does that tell you? Well, it's got a chance to go right over it, go up and ping those highs. Now, those highs are like grouped together. What does that do? That's another thing that you can look at, right? If you get over these, what's going to happen? Well, you probably got a little stops set up there. That means you can get a little thrust to the top side. It's what happened back here. You had a ledge, you thrust over it. Don't be surprised if you see another thrust up and another little ledge begin to form. NASDAQ. Let's see what that one looks like on the NASDAQ at the highs. So top here, 52.75 and three quarters. 52.75.91 is where they close it. Volume picks up. You get over it. That's a breakout. Successful breakout. I can't go higher. NDX. Let's see where that one looks. NDX probably the same story. No, not quite. So the NDX has the setup just like the S&P. NDX has the two highs sitting right up above. Right, you just had to break out on the NASDAQ. What do you want to bet this thing tries to break tomorrow? Folks, market wants to go higher. If you're fighting it, quit fighting it. Go with it. Take the money, right? You got the breakout Friday on the Russell. They're telling you they want to go higher. Quit fighting it. I keep hearing it over and over and over again from folks. There's no reason to fight the markets when they're when they're, you know, strong in a direction. There's no reason to. Matter of fact, these markets are extremely strong in a direction. It's, it's kind of dumb to do so. You know, last week I shared a, um, a trade with the members. Um, you know, I have a portfolio I run. Uh, I personally manage money, but I also have a portfolio that I show members how to trade. 
it's up 8% um, as of today on the year. Uh, so doing pretty well. But I, you know, I, I shared a trade with them in that portfolio on this day, right? What we were doing is we were buying a test back into support in this area. After a big fast move down with volume starting to dissipate right at the end. You know, it's a pretty good clue that you're going to get a bounce. You just had a move from 31 to 25 almost, right? That's six bucks off. What is that? That's 20%. That, that's a huge move, right? It's almost 20% in, in, in the span of what? Three weeks? That's a huge move. Right, you're going to get a bounce, and this is a bullish market. You're going to get a bounce out of that. You know you are, right? So you take a position, you stake it out, you catch it at the right time, and look at this: 10% move, folks. I I pointed out, and I'll and again, I I can't give you the trades, you know, on the air because they're for members. If you want to be a member, just get started. I mean, we're talking $15 a month. I mean, if you can't afford that, I'm not sure what you're doing listening to me. But there are trades out there, and I set up yesterday, and I'll share it, you know, in another week or so. But I set up yesterday, I told members about a particular set of trades that we wanted to look at. And sure enough, today they took off. Uh, it took off before we could get in them. Uh, we will still get in them. Uh, but it was, you know, one of those things where you can see it coming and uh, you make the trade. GLD, same thing. Gold spikes up. What's it doing? It's coming right back into the range. Where should it go? Right to that range. That's where it should go. I mean, you had a little resistance right here potentially, right? What does it do? It gaps over it this morning. What does it do? It runs to the next one. That's what that's what markets do. It runs right to the next one. It's exactly what I outlined to members in the uh, the live trade, you know, cradle to grave series uh, that we do. Folks, the money's there. Uh, you just got to learn how to see what the market's telling you. Listen to the market. You know, Ro Robin Sun, I think, was the one that was, you know, listen to the market. Well, even though he wasn't, uh, you know, doing a very good job of listening to it, neoclassically is the way you listen to it because you market is a series of tests. The test is where the information is released. If you know how to read that information release, it's like a bulletin board. They send you information, <laughs> and you take it, and you make your trades. Let's, uh, let's see if there's something else here we want to talk about. I'm going to end here with uh, a stock that was um, an email was sent to me. Um, I think it was late last night. I ended up doing a piece on it. It's here on the front page, as a matter of fact. It showed up here. And, uh, you know, the member talked about this particular stock and said, you know, this looks like a pretty good stock. It's set up with breakout on multiple time frames. You know, members are learning. They're, they're finding these stocks themselves. He sees the breakout last week, and yes, it's in fact exactly what he said. It's a breakout. It's on multiple time frames, and as a result of that, it's probably going to carry two to three bars on the longest time frame of the breakout, which happens to be the monthly. If you think this market's going to crash and we keep seeing these monthly breakouts along with weeklies, it ain't going to happen. I mean, you know, we can get a pullback, sure. But if you're, if you're thinking this market's going to crash and you're selling volatility or, I mean, you're buying volatility, you're barking up the wrong tree most likely. I know it's September. I know everybody wants to give you all the statistics about how September's horrible. But right now it's not in the cards. So look somewhere else, folks. There's money to be made. Make the money while they're giving it to you and then worry about it when they don't. Have a great night. Take care. I'll see you next time. Good night.